Hi, this is Anne with a quick anagram uh, to get you started um, on Replit. I actually really enjoy Replit and have been coding up many of the starter um, file sets for this semester in Replit. Um, it's super easy to use. It's uh, got a nice clean interface, but it is a bit limited um, compared to a full up IDE like um, Code Anywhere or Cloud9. And, um, and I've been working with those limitations just fine, but you may find them a little bit annoying. So I wanna give you some tips about um, how to use it and um, what you can and can't do. So um, when you land on this, um, this week 11 work, you will probably find yourself in this interface where you've got your index.html, that's this top file right here in the middle, a file um, explorer on the right where you can open up folders or not. And then over here is a preview window for the, um, essentially for the project, but what it always previews um, when you hit the run button is what's in index.html. And that is, um, in fact, one really important thing to know about Replit is for an HTML CSS project like this, it expects to find and it will only run an index.html at the root of this project. So if you have um, your HTML file with any other name, basically you won't get um, any code over here in the preview or when you shell out. So the top level root page in this project has to be index.html. Um, this is a pretty nice little preview. Um, feel free to use it, but when you are testing your page and particularly when you're testing layouts, you need to be um, verifying that those layouts work in a full open page, which you can get to by hitting this button right here and a second page will open up and you'll get a full browsers page. Couple of things about um, configuring this environment to suit you um, over here in the settings. Two things that you might wanna use, um, theme, we only got two, light and dark. Um, but a lot of people do like this dark interface and I would probably use it if I was gonna be working for a long time um, on Replit um, for my own purposes. For demos, I think it's easier for you to see the, um, the light interface, so I'm gonna switch back to that. And then the other thing that could be handy, um, and in fact, I'm gonna use it here for a little while. I don't use this very often, but I think for this demo, it might be useful. Um, I'm gonna switch from the side-by-side -side, um, default interface to a stacked interface, so that basically what's happening is you're seeing the code at the top and the output at the bottom. Um, now, to get back to your file set, um, you have to click on this. And then, for example, if we wanted to work on our CSS um, for this page, or, well, this is the CSS for index.html. And um, if I want to change it to light, what's another light color we can use? Uh, is a light green, okay? The good news is, um, like Google Docs, you don't have a save button, your code is saved immediately, and um, if you refresh, you get your new styling. Um, so, so, you don't have to, you know, you, know, you aren't going to have the problem that you did have sometimes with C9 where you made the change but you didn't hit the save button. Um, however, by the same token, if you're down here and you're working in another HTML file and you make some change down here to, for example, this style. So say I'm changing, um, so to get down to display Flexbox flags, I have to click that, okay? And if I change the background of that to gold and I <coughs> hit run, what comes back up is the original page. So every time you hit run, you're gonna see index.html and you have to click here to get down to this where the, col where the, where the color has been changed. Again, you can go back. Okay, so 
Um, one thing that can be useful, um, and, and depending on how much screen geography you have in your, um, your monitor, you definitely want to be managing the layouts and testing them in a full browser window. Okay, so I have that here, and if I hit refresh, I see that new color. One thing you can do, and I was having trouble um, on my previous take getting this to work, so have a little bit of patience with me, but if I resize that to be small, I should be able to bring these two windows up side by side, and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time fiddling with this, but I would probably have my code window be a little bit bigger. Okay. I don't need to see this much. And then you can also, you know, if you're gonna be working in a style.css for quite a while, you could make this whole, this, um, whole list of files disappear. Um, but generally, just keep that small. And then what you can do is, um, Leave this page open and just hit refresh here. So if I go back to cornflower blue, it gets auto saved and I can simply refresh over here. And I think that's the most effective way to work on these whole page layouts. Um, this still is not as wide a page as you'll want to test, but it definitely gives you a sense of. Um, a better sense of what a full page looks like than this does. Um, now, every time you run here, you're gonna get back to this index.html, but when you hit run here, it doesn't affect the view that you have over here. So just to, um, just to do a couple of things here. Um, the first thing you're gonna do in this week's exercise is um, I left you the, the style for this default flex layout. So this is with no styling. I have a bunch of SVG images. They each have a gold border so you can see where they start and stop. And um, I have controlled them to be, I think, a certain, no, there I'm not controlling their size at all. So they, so as you can see, they have very different sizes. Um, but, I gave you the styling for the number one exercise. So if I delete those comments in the CSS file, that gets saved. And if I come over here and hit um, shift refresh, and I think you better hit shift refresh, not just refresh. Okay. You can see that I've got a um, light green background color for the, the container that is um, that has the display flex attribute okay um, I gave it a border and again these things are there to help you envision what the um, what the layout is really doing and where the content is sitting now one thing I have to warn you is um, I'm going to go ahead and open up this window to full screen and um, refresh it one more time okay now what you're gonna find is that some of these layouts are just plain not gonna fit in your browser. But every browser has the ability to zoom. So for example, um, I can hit minus here and make it so this whole layout, okay, is zoomed small enough that I can get a screenshot, okay? Whereas when you create the the flex layout to make a row that wraps, you may have to zoom in to make it big enough so that your, your, the flags don't all fit across and it wraps. I want to see you demonstrating each of these. Now, there is a feature of, I'm going to go ahead and make this small again. There's a feature of this style that I added when I was prototyping in Chrome that works differently between Chrome and, um, and Firefox. And so I don't want anybody to get confused that this is a requirement. If I go down here, um, let's see. I'm gonna switch to, um, 
let's see, how do I show this? I guess I can show it this way. Let me go back to full page, okay, and see how I have my 10 flags and they end, and this, um, this flex container continues all the way over to the right-hand margin. Well, when I was working out my, um, my version of the solution, I didn't really want that. I wanted the container to be right here, and so I found an attribute to use um, that was called um, width fit content. And so um, I had that working rather nicely in Chrome. So let me zoom out here again. And see how in Chrome, that little bit of um, CSS makes the flex container actually do what it says it should do, which is fit the content um, that it is around. And it's simply a difference between the two browsers that on um, Firefox, that doesn't work right. On Chrome, that does work the way I expected. And I did try one more. I looked at Edge, and Edge works the same way Firefox does. So um, I'm not sure quite what's up with that, but you will um, you'll see some screenshots um, for this week where you're seeing um, content fit. And it doesn't, and, and, and so you're seeing a background that is tight to the set of images. But in fact, if you're working in Firefox, which you're free to do, um, you will see that, that the um, div that is the Flexbox container is extending um, out to the, to the edge of the page, to the bottom of the page, whatever. And so um, please, when you submit, um, and give me the, the URL for um, your shared version. Please, in your submit comments, also tell me which browser you used and took the screenshots from, because that'll help me make sure that I don't make mistakes when I grade. Uh, let me go back and see if there's anything else I should tell you about this interface. Um, no, I think that's enough to get you started. Uh, you may, one thing you might want to do when you're working on a complex page is have, um, sorry, let me get, grab this one. Okay. You might want to do the same second browser window trick where you have, um, you make a copy of this window and you have the HTML in one browser window side by side with, say, the style file over here. Um, you simply, I simply have not found a way to, even in this layout, to get my two files side by side in the editor. So um, that's a limitation um, and you need to find ways to work around it that work for you. Hope that helps.